Hello, I'm Julia Sim and I'm a statistician in the Keele Clinical Trials Unit. And I want to say a few words about the role of statistics in clinical trials. So in a clinical trial, you're comparing two or more interventions in terms of their effect on some outcome. And these interventions are administered to two or more different groups of patients. So you might be wanting to um, compare two different analgesics for the relief of pain, or two different operations for people who've had a dislocated shoulder, or perhaps two different types of psychological therapy for people who have problems of anxiety. In each of these cases, you have to measure the outcome in order to know which treatment is preferable. So for the two different types of analgesics, you need to know which of them produces the greater relief of pain. For the two different operations, for dislocated shoulder, which of them gives the more complete recovery of normal shoulder function? And for the two types of psychological therapy, which of them produces the greater reduction in symptoms of anxiety? So a clinical trial produces numbers, and it's the statistician's job to analyse those numbers. At its simplest, the statistician will calculate the average pain relief in the group that gets one analgesic and the average pain relief in the group that gets the other analgesic, to take that example. On the face of it, the analgesic that produces the greater average pain relief is the more effective treatment. However, things are a little bit more complicated than this in two main respects. The first issue that we need to deal with is the possibility that something other than the treatments that we've tested produce the difference that we found in our study. It could be that one group had greater pain relief than the other at the end of the study, not because of the analgesic that they received, but because of some other difference between the two groups. Maybe one group improved more than the other because it, on average it was older, or perhaps it was younger, or it had had pain for a shorter period of time or because people in that group had slightly different beliefs about their pain. Now, because patients are allocated at random to the treatment groups, which is why we talk about a randomized clinical trial, we expect the characteristics of these patients to be distributed equally across the two groups in our study. So we expect on average their age to be the same. The average time that they have um, had their symptoms to be the same and so forth. So what this means is we hope that the only difference between the treatment groups is the actual treatments that they've received. And if there's a difference in outcome at the end of the study, we would argue it can only be due to the difference in the treatments because that's the only way in which the groups differ. So the fact that patients are distributed randomly or allocated randomly to the two groups helps us to eliminate other explanations of any difference in outcome that we may find. The second issue that the statistician um, has to deal with is the possibility that one analgesic gave better pain relief purely by chance. And perhaps there is no underlying difference in the effectiveness of the two analgesics. So take a different example. Suppose you go into a school and notice that there are more girl pupils with black hair than boy pupils. Does this mean that girls in general are more likely to have black hair than boys? Perhaps, but it might just be a matter of chance that more, school, the more girls do so in this particular school than boys. And there may be no underlying difference amongst all girls and boys in terms of whether or not they have black hair. So we want to be confident that any difference we see in our trial represents a real underlying difference in the effectiveness of the treatments, rather than just a chance difference. So to deal with this issue, statisticians analyse their data, or they test their data, in terms of what is known as statistical significance. If the difference that they find in their data between the two groups is de um, uh, defined as being statistically significant, this means we can rule out the possibility that it is a chance difference with a high degree of confidence. 
On the other hand, if we don't achieve statistical significance, we cannot rule out the play of chance with the same degree of confidence. And it's not safe to assume that there's a genuine difference in effectiveness between the two treatments, even though the data in our particular trial seem to suggest this. So by testing for statistical significance, the statistician can try to produce an answer to the question as to whether the difference we found is a true difference that represents an underlying difference in effectiveness between the treatments that we're testing, or whether it is simply a chance difference. And it's only if it's the first of these, that is, that, it is a, that it's a true difference, that we can confidently recommend one treatment over another at the end of the study. So I hope this has given you some idea of the role that statistics play in clinical trials. Thank you for listening.